I have come to realize that quite a few people don't have a multimeter on hand. Now I find that a bit odd, as being the recipient of an old hand-me-down Simpson 260 when I was a kid, I've had a multimeter for about as long as I can remember. But I do realize that I'm the odd one out here. But if you're going to try and repair anything that is electric or electronic, a multimeter is just about a necessity. So I decided to look and see what I could find in the under $50 range. The very low end, I would say. The criteria that is guiding my hunt are the following items. Electronics is going to be favored over, say, appliance work. No 9-volt batteries. A 4,000 count minimum with a preference for 6,000 count. And lastly, auto ranging. So I ended up ordering this Kaiweets HT118A. Now I've used this company's test lead sets and been pretty happy with them. This was right around the $35 range. There was an Astro AI branded one that looked identical for about $2 less, but I couldn't get their homepage to load correctly, so I couldn't download the user manual. That right there made the Kaiweets worth the extra $2. It comes with two AA batteries, a basic set of test leads. These will be the reason this ends up being a $50 meter in the end. A thermocouple and the meter itself. I almost forgot. A tiny user manual. Let me put the batteries in and see if it even works. One screw holds the battery door slash stand in place. That's nice. A metal insert for the battery door screw. I really consider that a bonus at this price point. Okay, it powers up. Display is large and quite easy to read, so that's nice. Probe jacks are tight, but feel a bit flimsy. About what I would expect. When you select a function, LEDs light up around the jacks that are supposed to be used. At first I thought, well that's a waste. But trying to look at this as maybe the first time using a multimeter? I could see where that might help get the probes correct for the measurement selected. It has a nice backlight. It's brighter than it looks. I've got a lot of light hitting it. Of course, one of the most important things for a multimeter to do is give an accurate DC voltage reading. The Fluke 87 here is really old and does read a few millivolts low, best I can tell. The 76 here is old, but not as old as the 87. Voltage reading over a half an hour was stable as could be, and well within the 0.5% accuracy listed. The Fluke 76 is a 4000 count meter. This 87 is 4000 count in normal mode, and 20,000 count in high res mode. Update is quite slow in high res mode, which is what I have it in now. I'm very pleased with the accuracy of that. It's better than I was expecting, quite a bit better. The other main function that will be used a lot is the resistance function. Here I have a 0.5% 1.02K ohm resistor. Unfortunately it's a 602 size, so hard to get the probes to stay on it. But that is right where it should be, well within the 1% the meter is rated for. Here I have what are 0.1% 210K ohm resistors. I would say the meter is reading a tiny bit low, but way better than the 1% it's listed at. I think that will do just fine. The continuity function is nice to have. The red light seems to come on, but no beep under the 60 ohm range. And you get a green light and a beep under 30 ohms. That seems reasonable. I'll do a test of the diode function. The open circuit voltage of the probes measures 3.2 volts with new batteries, so it should handle most LEDs. Probably will not be able to measure some rare white or UV LEDs. Small price to pay for running off of two AA batteries. Here I have an RGB LED, about 1.7 volts for the red, and two point four volts for the green, 
and around 2.5 volts for the blue. With it working well for the higher voltages of the LEDs, it won't have any problems with the lower voltage of regular diodes. I'll do a quick check of the capacitance function. I don't have any high accuracy capacitors. So this 10% 1 microfarad is reading about 0.94 microfarad. And the 20% 100 microfarad is reading 115 microfarad. This is supposed to be a 100 nanofarad. The actual value should be somewhere in between 90 and 110 nanofarad. It didn't seem to detect anything lower than about 50 picofarad. But above 100 picofarad, it seemed to do a pretty good job. Let me check the current ranges. For the low current range, I'll run a bit of voltage through a 10 ohm resistor here. And that looks good. For the high current range, I'll use a 1 ohm resistor. The red backlight comes on at over 1 amp. Let you know your time is short. You're heating up the current shunt in the meter. Readings seem to be accurate, as accurate as I can check for, so not bad. And now for some AC voltage measurements. The red backlight comes on when I believe over 80 volts is being measured. I kind of like that, a sort of warning signal. Again, the reading looks to be within the 1% range. As line voltage here runs a little high most of the time, battery backups usually read 122, so that seems just about right. Now I never trust this no contact stuff. If it says there's voltage there, then there probably is. But if it indicates no voltage is present, don't trust that there is no voltage there. The one wire voltage sense seems to work. Again, I don't trust it. Same rules apply this as to the no contact sensing. And finally, temperature. List plus minus 4 degrees plus the temperature probe error, so looks like it reads a bit high when hot, but pretty close. It looks like it reads within the listed error range. That's not bad. Not a great thermometer, but could get by with it. Well, that's most of the functions. There is a hold button. Press it and the display holds on the current reading. Press it again and it goes back to normal. There is a min-max button. Press it and the maximum reading is shown. Press it again and the minimum reading is shown. Each press just moves between maximum and minimum. Have to press and hold to exit the min-max mode. There is a backlight button. Press to turn on backlight. Press again to turn off backlight. Long press to turn on flashlight. and another long press to turn off flashlight. At least it uses cheap AA batteries. I think this is a decent meter for the money. There were some 4,000 count meters, about $10 less. I do feel the extra $10 is worth it for the 6,000 count. There is a 20,000 count version of this meter for about $10 more. Does offer a little bit more accuracy, but for this level of meter, for most uses, I don't see it being worth it. The meter feels kind of cheap in the hand, Really what I would expect for a $35 meter. Well, maybe it feels a bit better than what I was expecting. The accuracy of it is better than I was expecting. I was a little surprised. A nice surprise, though. But there is one thing with the meter that I do have a problem with. The auto-ranging is slow. Not horrible slow, just a little bit slow. But the problem with that is, I could not find a way to turn off the auto-ranging and set it to a fixed range. It makes the meter less user-friendly, it bothers me. Would I rather have a manual range meter over this one's auto ranging? No, not even close. I dislike manual range meters. I would much rather have an auto ranging feature that can't be turned off. This is why this $35 meter will end up being $50, or close to it. Nothing wrong with these probes. They feel good in the hand, seem to have pretty nice tips on them. They're just not enough to make good use of the meter. Something like this is about the minimum needed. I bought the 11 piece set of this a couple of years ago and been very happy with them. I really like the alligator clips. The ad says silicon, I have my doubts about that, but they are a nice flexible lead set. I think quite good for the money. Matter of fact, I turned around and bought the KET 05 23 piece kit 
after using the 11 piece for a while. The point here is that you will need some extra leads and clips to go with the meter to really make it convenient and useful to use and that needs to be considered in the price. If anyone has a favorite cheap meter or lead set, leave a comment. I may try and do a few more of these. I think this meter with a small test lead set will do nicely for a starter meter. Thank you for watching.